I'll be honest, I wasn't 100% sure, but I think you're ready. That's right. I think you're ready for the professional section in Luminar AI, and I'll be taking this one quite seriously. So I hope you've brought your pro hat with you. Here's mine, courtesy of my dad. Nah, not really. This is my professional hat. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one is. No, not really. This one is. Well, at least it's the right country now, right? <laughs> no, this actually is my professional hat. Wait. Uh, this is my workout hat. Sweat marks, gross. Forget the professional hat. Let's just get into it. So I was well aware that I probably didn't have a photograph to demonstrate on that had the full spectrum of colours in it. So because we've got a beautiful blue sky today, I asked my daughter to dress in something red, something yellow, grab the orange basketball, and let's get down to the local greenery at the park. So apart from showing to my daughter that I'm really not very good at basketball, I managed to get a nice photograph of her that got her seal of approval. And that's this shot, and that's what we're gonna work on today. So to access the color harmony section, just come to edit, and then we wanna scroll all the way to the bottom in tools until we get to the professional section. I told you it was serious professional section and now we're going to open up color harmony and now within color harmony we have access to nine sliders and why have we even got this section because if we were to scroll all the way up to the top in the light section we've already got options to change the temperature and the tint we've also got a whole panel here dedicated to color and working with the hue saturation and luminance and those options might be enough for some mere mortal photo editors but for you guys using luminar ai we've got access to more color options but to utilize them properly we need to understand them so that's what we're going to do in this video i've got a few examples and i'll walk you through and by the end of this video you should understand exactly what those sliders are doing and then be able to to start implementing them in your own work as well. So let's get into that. Thankfully, the first two sliders are nice and easy to understand. So if I grab the Brilliant slider and start pushing that to the right, it's basically just another saturation amount slider just by a different name. Let's double click it to reset it. And now the Warmth slider, if I push that to the right, we're gonna warm the photo up, push it to the left, we're cooling it down. Pretty self-explanatory, but obviously yellows, oranges, and reds are associated with warmth, whereas like blues, purples, and greens are considered colder colors. That's why we have have this called a warmth slider push it to the right warm things up push it to the left cool things down so far so good okay now things start to get interesting as we look at color contrast this one does take a little bit more to get your head around but it's worth it because once you understand this you can start implementing it and just get a little bit more out of working with color in your photos so what we can see on the hue slider is the full range of colors that we have access to and this tool allows us to select one of those colors and what it can do is brighten up that color and darken down the opposite color. So if you're familiar with the additive RGB color wheel, you'll know that the opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of blue is yellow, and the opposite of green is magenta. So if we take the line with the colors represented along it and wrapped it up into a circle, whatever color you choose around that circle, it's the color that is directly opposite, 180 degrees, which will be affected by this tool. In this illustration here, the top line represents what we have here in the hue line. And in the band directly below it, we can see what's considered the contrasting color. Or for those of you that understand color theory, that's just the complementary color in terms of an additive color model. Let's take a look at it in action. And as I crank this up towards 100, you'll see that the brightest area of this is now what was the reds. I'll bring that back down. The reds are fully saturated. I take it to the right and then they push towards white. And that is because we've targeted the reds. Conversely, as I push this up, the opposite color, the blues and the cyans, push much darker. Let's bump this up to around 50% and let's grab the hue slider. And as I move that to the right, you'll see that as we move through the colors, that the color we're targeting on this slider line is now becoming much brighter and the opposite color, the one directly beneath it in the color line, is getting darker. I'll double click to reset that and we'll come back to the photo of my daughter for a real example. So let's grab the amount slider and start pushing that to the right. And I'm gonna to go to 100%. So there's a couple of things we can notice straight away. One is we've completely destroyed the photo. As with so many of the sliders inside of Luminar AI, pushing it to 100%, getting too aggressive with it, is just gonna destroy your photo. 
So by all means, crank any tool to the max just so you get a feel for it and you understand exactly what it's doing to your photo and then come back and use it with much more subtlety. Okay, I said we were gonna put our pro hats on today. So this is a really good takeaway. Part of getting an aesthetically pleasing image is just treating your images with a bit of subtlety, bit of care, less is more. If you're undecided with a tool, should I crank this up a little bit or ease it back? Chances are you should probably ease it back. And the second thing is what the tool is supposed to do, and that's take the color that we've targeted, in this case the reds, push that up, and that will bring the surrounding colors, like the oranges and the yellows, up with it as well. And then the opposite color, the cyans and surround, and then the opposite color, the cyans and the surrounding colors, they will come down. So in this case, we only really have the blues in that color vicinity. So it's just brought those blues down as well. So now let's grab the hue slider, which is just another word for color. And we're gonna move that through the range of colors. And you can see that as I move towards the yellows, the opposite, the blue gets much darker, the yellows and greens get much brighter. We'll keep pushing on and we're brightening the greens. Now we're brightening the blues. So the blues are pushed towards white, and then you can see her skin and dress that exist in the oranges, the basketball too, they've got much darker. So of course you'd never want this at 100%, but let's say you just wanted to push in a little bit of tan into her and brighten the sky, we can absolutely do that. Let's push this back to 100 to see what else we're doing. So as we move this through towards into the blues, purples, and now we're pushing in towards those reds. And we're now back to where we started. And unlike other tools that go up to around 100, this one goes up to 360. And the reason that the hue slider goes all the way up to 360 rather than 100 like so many of the other sliders is because the line actually represents a circle of color. So if we start at the top at red and we work our way all the way around and back to red again, we've done a full 360 degrees. Spread that out on the line, zero to 360 zero to 360. Does that make sense to you? Made sense to me. Let's bring this amount slider all the way down and then just start to ease that in just a little bit. If I wiggle this left and right, which is one of the techniques I like to do just to get a feel for exactly what it's doing. And let's say we settle on 20. We can now grab the slider and we're getting a much more natural look as we make adjustments to the colors by bringing it through the range of hues. So we could absolutely go for a brighter sky with a more tan look to my daughter. But what I think works better in this instance is to just set our hue slider somewhere between the yellow and green. And now if I toggle this off, and toggle it on and looking at the photo with the before and the after. We're able to increase the saturation, but do it in a way that we're in control of. If you're watching this and you're thinking of getting Luminar AI, I've got a link in the description below and a discount code at Sky10 and you can help yourself to that and save yourself some money at the checkout. And you'd also be helping me out support this little one because I get very small commission from Skylum when you do use that link. So win-win for everybody. Okay, let's take a look at the split color warmth and the main difference between that slider and the actual warmth slider is the warmth slider affects the whole picture regardless of what color it's talking into. Whereas the split color warmth sliders are basically separating your image before you move them into the warm tones and the cool tones. So let's take a look at how that works. I'll grab the warm slider and start moving that to the right. And you can see that we've introduced a lot of warm orange tones, but we haven't introduced them into the sky, but we've only introduced that coloration into the colors that were already warm. And now if I take that slider to the left, we're cooling things down, but we're only affecting the colors that were already warm. So if I grab the cool slider now and start taking that to the left, we're taking the already cool colors and making them more cool. And now if I take this to the right, we're going to be warming up the cool colors in the image. So we've got some deep purples in the houses in the background. We've got the blue sky and the blue of my daughter's eyes. So as we move this slider, we're pretty much talking just into those areas of the photo. Just like with the color contrast slider, you want to be careful of how aggressive you are with these sliders. You can see quite an unsightly piece of fringing going on around the bush here. And this is occurring because we've got the two extremes of the cool tones of the sky, and then they're meeting the warmer tones of the tree and Luminar doesn't really know what to do with these transition pixels that happen in between the warm and the cool. So what's a good practical use for this? Let's take a look. If I double click them just to reset them, we go back to our original. And now let's suppose we want to create an orange cyan split tone. What we can do is create a more unifying orange hue through the warm colors. We can take the cool colors and just push them a little further to the left. And that's gonna enrich the blues and the purples and give us a nice warm, cool split tone. But another useful application is to take things the other way. If you feel that things are getting a little too warm in your image and the cools are getting a little too cool, you can actually bring the two closer together. Basically, we just wanna take the warm colors this time and cool them down 
and we can take the cool colors and just warm them up and we can just settle on a happy place in between here. So now if we look at our before and our after, you should be able to see that as well as adding some contrast here, we've also been able to neutralize the colors in that image. But for this one, I'm gonna keep trending towards that warmer look and I'm just gonna tickle a little bit of this in. Okay, onto the color balance. And this one's pretty cool as well because it actually allows you to force colors into the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So to better demonstrate how that tool applies to the shadows, midtones, and highlights, let's take a black and white photo and send it into the computer. Okay, we can clearly see the full range of tones we have available here. And you can see from the drop down box in the color balance section that we can talk into the shadows, midtones, and the highlights. So if we select the highlights and I were to grab the cyan and red slider and start moving that, you can see how we can push some of this color directly into those highlights. And by playing with different amounts of these sliders, you can really fine tune these colors. Let's jump into the midtones and just change those slightly. Let's warm things up there in the midtones. And now let's come into the shadows and let's suppose we want to put some blues into the shadows, maybe even a little cyan as well. What about make it more purple and push in a little bit of magenta? Okay, I've got to say again, a little goes a long way. You don't want to push these sliders too far because if you start cranking them all around all over the place, things are going to get pretty crazy pretty quickly. Okay, let's see it in practice on that photo of my daughter. When I'm using the color balance tool, I like to start with the midtones, just so that I can make any adjustments and give the overall photo a general color wash. So the skin tones in my daughter's face, they are just a little bit all over the place at the moment. So I'm just going to bring a bit of cyan in and just see if we can't correct that just a little bit. Now look, if I push the cyan all the way to minus 100, you can see that you can really get a strong color cast really quickly, really easily. And while it might be fun to play around with that for a while, it's not really a look that's gonna do much for your photos. Push this towards the yellow side, just so that we're adding a little more yellow into our cheeks as well. And then we can move on once we're happy, let's say into the highlights. And while there are no hard and fast rules here, what I do tend to like to do is just add a little bit more of red and yellow into my highlights and just help warm those up. And oftentimes I'm doing my color grading here and I'm not using this or vice versa, but in this case we're demonstrating the tool, so we're using both. If after watching this tutorial and you like the look of the tool and you'd like to see me demonstrate it on a landscape edit, just write landscape in the comments below and I'll put another video together showing you a real life walkthrough in Luminar AI with the color harmony tool. Now if we jump into the highlights, let's have a look at the shadows and I'm gonna aggressively push these to 100, throw some cyan in there, and you can see, unless you're going for a particularly graphic look, you can very quickly destroy your photo. So I'm just gonna ease these all the way back. Look, let's double click these just to reset them quickly. And I may just put a hint of blue into the shadow, maybe a little bit of purple. Should we keep it warm? Should we go towards the reds? Let's do that and let's have a quick toggle of our before and our after. Okay, we certainly have a much warmer image now and that plays into that nice warm evening light that I experienced when I was there taking these photos. But just my personal preference, I'm not a big fan of overly saturated photos, which is certainly what we have right here. So I'm gonna jump back into the brilliant slider and I'm just gonna ease that back. So we still have the warmth, but we've muted some of that vibrancy that we created before. And we could now probably boost the overall warmth of the photo up just with this slider here. Look, if I went all the way to 100, again, it's completely crazy. You wouldn't want to do that. But maybe let's tease in a little bit. 7, 10, 11, put more warmth in, bring the brilliance a little bit back. Okay, now let's have a toggle of our before and our after, before and after. In this edit, all we've used is the color harmony tool, but let's suppose that that color harmony is part of an overall edit and we've got other things going on, other tools inside of Luminar. We just wanted to reduce the effect of what the color harmony tool is doing. Let's suppose we just want 50% of that. One way to fix that would be to come into every single slider and individually halve the amount that we'd cranked it to. That would do it. Because this is the only tool we've used in this particular edit, of course we could come down to the bottom slider there and just reduce that. But hypothetically, we've got other stuff going on. So what could we do? Well, because we don't have an overall slider that lets us reduce the color harmony by a certain percentage, activate the mask, make sure the paintbrush tool is selected, and then just bring the opacity of this paintbrush to the amount we want. So in this case, we decided 50% would do it. And then just make a really nice big brush and then just sweep over the entire photo like this. And now when I let go, we have 50% of the color harmony applied to the photo. Here's our before, here's our after. We still have the effect, but now it's only with 50% over the whole photo. Nice. And in my opinion, that more subtle approach is much more visually pleasing. 
So now if you combine what we've learned with the color harmony tool inside of Luminar AI with the other color tools, we've got a lot of control over the overall color grading and look of our photo. I've created another video all about those other color tools and how to use them inside of Luminar AI. So if you'd like to check that video out, you should see it appearing on the screen now. So why don't you go and click on that and I will see you in that video. Hello, Dad. Don't you hello, Dad, me, mate. What's the meaning of this? Using that photo of me with that funny red and white wiggle. You know I'd had a few when you took that. Anyway, I look like a right Muppet. You're going to have all them YouTube subscribers or whatever they are looking at me. Uh, just because you're 42 years old don't mean well, I won't be on a plane coming over there to New Zealand and giving your ears a blooming good boxing boy. Have you even listening to me?